brightest blessings this is raven and today we're going to be working with this graphic 45 um paper called make a splash um i'm absolutely in love with this paper now i've already made uh quite a bit to go with this i basically want to make a mermaid book of shadows stroke journal and we're going to use the papers from this as well as some other bits and bobs so let me show you what the plan is so i want to use this piece for the front cover you'll have to bear with me because this is going to be a really large journal so if it is in and out of focus i do apologize this is the basics of the cover that I have already made and this is some wallpaper that I found at the range which is the shop here in the UK that I thought would go quite nicely because it's not openly ocean um, but it, it's nice and textured and the base is an old book big book um, I've been making some really large books of shadows now, as you can see, there is glue and things sticking out in places. So not to worry about that. We will be covering some of that. Yes, there is more fabric on the back than there is on the front. Again, we're going to sort all that so it's not an issue. I decided to make this into um, a journal where we can remove the signatures. We're not going to put the signatures in today because I've run out of elastic. That's coming later today. But I thought we would get the cover finished. So the inside, as you can see, I've made a start. So this, again, is another piece of wallpaper that's going to be in the background. I've already put uh, the eyelets in for uh, the sari silk that I'm going to use. And then I have already pre-cut some pieces that I want to use here. Now, obviously this is gonna cover up where the brad is and that's perfectly fine because I'm gonna stick a hole in there and we're gonna have that same one on each side, as you can see, like that. And then this, obviously I need to glue this down here so that this is essentially what it's gonna look like when it's finished and then there's gonna be three lines of the elastic that we can slip our signatures into so that whoever buys this once it's filled they can take them out and put new signatures in and I like this effect um, had I really thought about it before I made my original book of shadows the big one with the eye on one side and the dragon skin on the other side and their folders I probably would have done this because it means I can add and adapt to it. Um, the only thing with this is that I tend to sew my signatures together before I put them in. It's not necessarily something you have to do if you're going to use a thicker uh, paper or cardstock, um, but we'll see how this goes. So yeah, that's the cover and we're going to work on the signatures and things today. So I've already picked some papers that I want to use from the set and I also got the background set as well. So we've got this one, which is, I mean, stunning. Look at it. Absolutely beautiful. And on the other side, this is my favourite out of the whole pack. Um, visually, it's just beautiful. We've got this one. Nice and plain on the back this one again nice and plain on the back that's the same but look at this side just stunning and then we've got purple one this is beautiful I love this again nice and plain on the back I've got two of those ones and this one. 
So, yeah, these are the papers they're going to use. Now, with Graphic 45 paper, if you've not used it before, they're 12 by 12 papers if you get the 12 by 12 size, and they always come with an extra little lip at the top. And if you want to zoom in, you'll see what each individual page is called, and there'll be a, a number, a barcode, and then what the pack is called. And it, that's the same on every single one of the papers. So if I just keep that still for a second, because all of these papers you can um, purchase individually as well. These ones are from the background kit, so they don't have the numbers on. This is that one and that one. This one does the front cover. Because I got the background kit and the main set. It means that um, I've got plenty to work with and I want to use this thicker cardstock. So yes, let's do this. I also got the stickers as well. You can see I've used some. I've made another smaller book of shadows ready for camp. Or I've used some of the stickers. Right, so first things first, I need to cut these strippies off. How are you all doing, guys? I know I've been a bit naff with the video uploads. I've been so, so busy. Sorting things out ready for camp that I've not really had the chance and to be honest I'm not all that confident making things on camera I know that sounds silly but a lot of the time when I'm making things it's trial and error because I don't have a set picture in mind as to what it is that I want to accomplish normally I just look at what papers I've got and then see what I can make from those towards the end of the video I'll show you what I've been making so you can see <coughs> oh dear and the weather's a lot cooler here in the UK now thankfully we've had rain for the last couple of days which has been a nice change not that Douglas likes it he doesn't like to go outside in the rain This is a really old paper trimmer. I don't even know if they still do this particular one. It is my favourite one. The only issue I found with this one is that it clogs up in here. And these need to be changed quite regularly. I know I can still find those on Amazon. It's a Tonic Studios one. I'm sure there's a brand new, better version by now. As I said, this is a good few years old right so we've got those and I sort of wanted to put them in sets of three because there's going to be the three signatures so we'll use three per signature and I've also where's that one I have also got some A3 <coughs> uh, coffee dyed paper or tea dyed paper that have just been folded so those will go in the signatures as well there's also bits of ephemera and things that I've either made myself or I've got from other places and the majority of that is in here so these are mine that I've made as are these. Oh dear. Open my pack. So this is what I tend to do when I collect. Sorry, quick sip of my drink. When I start collecting for a, a particular <coughs> theme. So these were freebies from uh, Income Page Journals. 
they send you um, an email. So I've got two of those. Uh, these are some words from the Graphics Fairy. And then these are ones that I've made as well. All of these. So the, the likelihood is I'm not going to use all of these in the one journal. I just like, once I get an idea, so I wanted to do a mermaid book of shadows. Once I got the idea, that was it then. I just started collecting different things that I can print out and use. So this was some paper that I put together. Upside down. <coughs> Dear me, cough's bad today. I think it's the damp. So yeah, these are all really basic. Two seconds, let me just go and sort of this out. Talk amongst yourselves, guys. Sorry, he was being a thief. So, yeah, very basic things that I can cut up, use as they are. Make into journal cards, tags, pockets and the like. So, yeah, that's all those. These were some, really, I've had these for years. Um... I don't even know where the papers come from. But yeah, just some little journal cards that I'd made a long time ago. And then somebody sent me in um, some happy mail not too long ago, some of uh, these from Timu. Um, so they're single-sided. I don't like putting these into journals because they're single-sided. Plus with Timu, a lot of this is copyrighted <coughs> material. But I'm not just going to throw it away. I'm more likely to make, um, like cut the fish out to use or make a, a tag or an envelope or something. So like these would be perfect to just stick on a page. So yeah, we've got a fair amount there to work with. And the idea is that as I said, some we'll use, some we won't. So we'll have enough for other books of shadows. I also got, um, they're like die cuts. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, so I may use some of the little pieces on the cover. I haven't quite decided yet what I want to use other than the, the main paper so yeah that's that so we've got these three signatures that we're going to use now I just need to <laughs> Douglas don't start please I just need to have a quick look One, about 32. Just to make sure that I've got the right um, height. I think we're probably fine. Yeah, we're under the 32, so we don't need to cut any off. Perfect. Oh, goodness me. Sorry, guys. So, I think I want this one on the outside. Let me get my scoreboard. So, we're at 12. We want... Six for the centre. And by all means, if you don't have a 
the scoreboard you can just fold these in half i just find this a little bit easier the issue with graphic 45 paper i sometimes find is that um they can crack So I don't press down too hard. But putting that little score down just helps it fold. So I'm not doing that one that way because we've got the other one that way. And obviously these aren't in order, so we'll sort an order out in a second. fold these in half now obviously the width of the book is a lot wider than this so this is why we're going to have a variety of different pages and things in there so it's more like a junk journal style Jubbly. There we are. So let's grab some. So this is the, the A3 tea or coffee dyed paper. I've also got some A4 thin paper. So I'm going to use some of these, I think two in each signature, so that would be six. <coughs> oh dear. Well, sorry if this gets a bit boring, my lovelies, but... Everybody always asks me how I do things and what I do and, you know, this, that and the other. And the reality is I'm sat here doing this day in, day out, folding pages and cutting pages. The fun part is the decorating. Five, one more of this colour. And I think there's two shades of blue in this as well. So we've got this blue. So I think I'll do one of each of that blue. lighter blue here I don't know if you can see on camera the difference there but there is a difference this is one of the common issues with the the larger books that I do is that you do really struggle to find papers that are gonna fit
which generally means I go through a lot of A3 paper. So that will do for that. I've also got some pre-folded, uh, it's like graph paper, I don't know how many sheets I've got left, one, two, three, four, five, six, so it should have enough there to do two in each signature. Let me one of those. Um, And then I have got some A3 multicolour paper, but I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get to it because it's right under the bottom. Let's have a look. Oh no, I've managed to get it. So these ones I like to keep crumpled um, to give a bit of texture. So we've got pinks and purples here. <coughs> All of which will fit nicely into this particular journal. Some bluey coloured ones. So yeah, they're all perfect. So I think that's going to be enough. So let's have a look at our signature, shall we? And then obviously we'll be decorating some of these pages and things. So I like to separate everything out into the different piles and then we can sort out which papers are going to go with which. So the idea was to have two blue and one purple in each of the signatures. So I'm thinking I want this one to be the first one. There's our purple one. Oh dear, excuse me. Goodness. And we'll add that one on the inside. So that's for our first signature. Our second one, we go that one, that one, and that one. And then all being well. Yeah we've got those. So we've got three signatures there for the outside. So what I tend to do is have sort of 15 to 20 pages per signature depending on the size of the journal and I like to mix it up a little bit. So I think we'll have a crinkly purple and then a coffee dyed. And then and when I have journals like this, I also mix match where each of the papers are going to be because when you have, I tend to do the three uh, pin stitch. If it's in the middle, you're likely going to miss the top and bottom hole and then this will be a really loose piece of paper. So I tend to put one at the top and one at the bottom. It doesn't always have to be two in the same place either. Really one. That one. So how many have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. Eight, 
11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So we'll leave it at 15 for now and we can always add pages. So our signature will look like this. And I think it's about having a balance when you've got different coloured pages. You don't want them all too big or all too small. You want a nice range. And I think that, <coughs> oh dear, is about perfect. So, yeah, our first signature, just there. And then, excuse my arm, what I tend to do is bang it so everything goes to the bottom and then I just put a clip on it until it's ready. So the next one. That one. Sorry if I keep going off camera because it's so big and fiddly. Two. Three. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Okay. Excuse the arm. Signature number two. Signature number three. Two. Three, four. Five. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Do 
Excuse the arm. Um... Okay. Right, now I've got those. I like to put them together. Sorry, that's probably going to be really close to the camera. I like to put them together and just see what the sort of thickness is going to be. I think I can actually add a fair amount more to this. So, this is where I see how many of these pages I've got left because I like to keep them equal. So, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So, we've got twelve of those. That's nice and easy. six more of those. And then we can just add these to each signature. So I'm going to try and pick a bit of a variety so that it's not all completely the same. Oops, so we've got those. Those can go in signature one in a second. picked one coffee stained. It's supposed to be two. So two coffee. so let's find places for these so as I said guys I am sorry if this is a little bit boring unfortunately because I'm still trying to get stuff done for camp it's a case of oh, filming what I can when I can so I think I'll put a coffee dyed on the outside and then like that Coralie one is. We'll do purple. And a pinky colour. And then where this blue one is. We'll do. Died. And the pinky corally one. So that leaves tw that's twenty one pages in there now, which is a little bit that's a page over what I would normally do, but actually, it's not too bad. And the reason that we do this, can you see here? These pages are all the same size. But can you see how the ones in the middle now look slightly bigger? And that's because where your spine is, if you can see, your spine is slowly getting thicker here. So because it's slowly getting thicker, it's pushing the pages out, which is fine if you've got a large enough book. So let me put the clip on. Make sure it's totally tapped. It. So if we get our book now and that goes there, the idea is that this is obviously going to be clipped into here. So we want to make sure that it's not going to come outside of our cover. So that's perfect. These were for the second signature. And then we'll sew them together as well in a minute so you can see how I sew my signatures together. That way up. 
And that's the other thing when you're sorting papers with images on, make sure you've got them all the right way up. <coughs> oh dear. Goodness me. Every time. So we'll put an extra coffee dyed and the purple. There. And then we've got our blue in there. We'll put the coral and a purple. left and we've got that coral on there so I think I'll just put that one in dark coffee and purple and coffee dyed This does remind me actually that I need to um, do some more coloured A3 pages because I've been using them all up. We also need to be aware that when you're making a signature this thick, it's going to be quite hard to put your holes in. So you'll have to watch me struggle and do that in a minute. <laughs> Do the same again. So purple coffee dyed on the outside. Coffee dyed. Okay, there I think. And do a purple. And you can see with these, when I've dyed them, I don't like doing the solid colour. I mean, some of them are solid colour, but where I dry, the way I dry them is on top of each other. So that's why you get imprints from other pages. Or you can see here, this was up against a coffee dyed page. So <coughs> it took on the, the coffee colour. Not something you have to do. It's just something I like to do. I think we'll go... And then this pinky coloured one that I've got left. Now I could iron these if I wanted to, but as I said, I like to have some crinkly because it adds to the texture of the journal. They're still perfectly okay to write and draw on, so not really too much of an issue. <coughs> so there we go. Bring our cover out again. Move the much better. So obviously this is going to fall to the bottom because it hasn't got the elastics in. But can you see now how nicely that fills? Our book of shadows. Now, as I said, I may. I've been able to get away with putting these in as um, single pages because I've got a thicker card on the outside and on the inside, which is where most of the wear and tear is going to be from the elastic. But I think, hmm, I don't know. I tell you what, comment below and let me know whether, <coughs> oh dear whether you think I should sew the signatures together um, to put them in or whether I should wait for my uh, Velcro, not Velcro, sorry bro, words escape me, um, elastic, whether when I put the elastic in, whether I should leave these as separate pages or whether I should bound them together to put in. So if you let me know below, I will go with whatever the majority says and we'll see how it goes um, because I'm not in a massive rush for this one. 
and then in the next video hopefully over the weekend or the start of next week i'll make a video with whatever everybody's commented on and we can finish this off together and start decorating it i think that's probably the best idea so let's put all this together sorry guys that was a bit boring wasn't it i do apologize it's the inside and outside cover so what i tend to do is have piles of things i've got some like cake stands you know like the cake drying racks i've got those to my right hand side stacked up to the top of my desk uh, which is higher than my camera and what i tend to do is uh, pile everything <laughs> in those in the set section so it's easy for me to get to so let me show you one of the other ones i've been working on so this is another big boy as you can see nice and thick i've already got um this one's a lot thicker i've already got all of the uh, signatures there these do definitely need sewing together so we can sew these together now um again i'm waiting for elastic to go into here but this is going to be hidden elastic so you're not gonna this is all going to be covered up and um yeah so that's the cover so we'll sew these together that's easy you still get to see the sewing process then book corners there that i need to put aside so my little pot i think see this is the last piece of elastic which wouldn't be enough to do an awful lot my hands are still minging because i've been coffee dying uh, which is the thinner one my eyes don't want to work. This one's a thin one. Sorry if my head gets in shot. I'm looking for my little needle. There it is. You can hear Douglas jumping around. You want him to come and say hello, are you? You want to come and say hi? Come on then. Up. Good boy. What are you doing? Those are mine. Thank you. Thief. Thief. Yes, you are. He likes to uh, lie down on my table while I'm working quite often. You can't sit there. What's that? I want cuddles, Mum. Oh, dear. You've just been outside. So you're all wet. Come on. Thank you. Good boy. I love you too. Go on then. Go find your bony. Go find your bony. Where is it? Right. Sorry. <laughs> Dog inbound. Now, there's lots of ways that people do this. I do it my own way. You'll either like it or you won't. Um, I like to use this really thin um, waxed cord. It's supposed to be for jewellery. I do also use this cord, which is a bit thicker, um, and that's waxed as well. And I like to use the waxed so that it it slides through the paper nicely. But I've been using this thinner stuff a lot because it's actually um, really quite tough. Now, a lot of people will start measuring and doing all sorts. I just do it by eye because it's unlikely I'm going to want to put charms on it. And I end up cutting a lot of it off anyway. Douglas has found one of his toys, so sorry if you hear him clattering about. So we'll just do three signatures for now on camera so you can see. Put these up out the way. So we've got three signatures. I've got three lots of cord. OK, now before I even start, I like to make sure that my needle's threaded because once I start, I... I literally want to crack on doing each one. Now, if you're sewing into a journal as opposed to sewing just a signature, I would recommend having a template so that you know where all your holes are so that they're all the same. Because this is um, just going to be a signature, standalone signature, I'm not going to do that. No, thank you. 
no so as you can see same sort of thing we've just done yeah one thing i am going to do is pull some more of the a3 paper out because i like to have a big one in the middle if i can oh that's right i have to cut these down no matter what we'll do douglas no you cannot be the center of attention all the time I'm going to do it so that these longer pieces are at the bottom and then I'm going to snip this in a little bit on each side and make this into a pocket in the centre. So in here I've got plain as well so that whoever takes this book of shadows on they can do whatever it is they want to do. Douglas, no! You cannot be the centre of attention all the time. No. Go find your boat or piggy. Where's piggy? So in general, a lot of people will have cradles and things. <coughs> I don't have a cradle. <coughs> I tend to just do things by hand. As I said... Having a template is useful, which you can just make with a piece of uh, card if you're going to be sewing into a journal itself so that they're all the same. In this instance, you're not going to notice because these are going to be removable. So it doesn't matter if they're all exactly the same, at least not in my view anyway. Um, I quite like the fact that it's going to be slightly hodgepodge. Um, it gives the book a bit of character um, and allows you to, to mess about with them and move signatures around. So yeah that's that basically so all you need to make sure you do as i said before is make sure that all of your pages are right down in the crease okay and i'm just holding it with my thumb in the center and my finger either side so this is an all there's lots of different ones out there i'm going to look for roughly the middle I'm going to pinch the signatures together and push through. I'm not going to push all the way through. Sorry, guys. I'm not going to push all the way through because this all is a lot thicker than my needle and I'll end up with really loose uh, binding. And then I'm going to look for the bottom. About there. Like that. And then same again at the top. Now, I want my dangle bits to be on the outside of the signature. So we start with the middle. Okay, the middle hole. <coughs> we push our needle through to there. We want to make sure we leave a tail out. Go through the bottom out of the hole pull through again make sure that we've got a tail okay we're then going to go to the top hole from the bottom and push our needle through so then we've got this okay we're then going to go back through the middle and out and that is the basic stitch Okay, I then open it out now you want to make sure that this is pulled tight but don't pull so hard that it's gonna crinkle your book I like to have a string either side so you see this has gone loose again now because I've pulled on it <coughs> you want to make sure that that's nice and tight I then do a double knot and that is your signature. Now if I'd wanted charms I would have left this to go all the way down to the bottom because I'm not bothered about charms. Where did I put my little scissors? Okay. Because I'm not bothered about charms so long as I've got 
a little bit of a string so that you can see something's happened. That's that. And all I've wasted is that little bit. And that is a signature. It's not going to go anywhere. It's happy. This helps it to fold nice and flat too. And then, as I said, with this bottom, uh, middle one rather, because it's slightly too long, I can fold this up. <coughs> oh dear. And glue. And we've got a little tuck pocket there now. And that's that. So let's do another one. Needle, thread. Might help if you try and put it in the side with a hole, Raven. What's this one got? Near Doug is choking to death. He's not choking. It's because he's been barking. Right. Roughly the middle. Poke. Through the top. Poke. Find the bottom. Poke. Through the centre. If you're not holding tight enough, like I just wasn't, you'll find that your pages move and then your holes don't line up. Now I can clip these together if I want to. However, I then find that I'm far asking about for goodness knows how long. And the clips make everything a bit bulky. They look better. Oh, get in the hole. Goodness me. Not my day today, I tell you. other ones through without all of this rigmarole. I was saying how cool it was today and I'm suddenly getting really warm because I'm getting flustered. So pull it through, make sure we've got a bit of a tail. So our tail is there. Again, you can go top or bottom. It really doesn't matter either way. Even people that do this all the time make mistakes. <laughs> right. And let's back to There we go. You can already feel that that's not gone in the right place. There we go. Hallelujah. Oh, now the needles come out. Helpful.
can be a finicky process. Um, this one is just not in the mood. There we go. Through we go, my friend. Right. So, yeah, we're going to pull the strings on either side. We're not going to pull too tight, but tight enough that this isn't going to be loose. Two double knots and then cut wherever we want, which is there. So I've wasted a tiny little bit. That's our signature. Fold those up, those will be a little tuck. Okay, so that's two signatures. Right, let's try this last one. And hopefully it won't give us the same rig roll. And then I'll show you the other bits that I've been up to. Um, we've finished a fair amount. So I'm not going to put a big one in this one because there's one in the middle already. So in the middle. In the top. In the bottom. Ooh. Through the middle, through the top, leave a tail through the bottom. A lot of it with these pages is the angle in which you put the needle in because especially these needles because they're not um they're not sharp on the end i mean don't get me wrong they still hurt if you prick your finger with them but they're not sharp like a normal sewing needle back through the middle like that string either side pull not too tight Or not. There we go. Okay, so there we had three signatures relatively quickly, bar the middle one being a pain in the bum. <coughs> okay, right, let's have a look what I have been making. So this was the eye that we um, did, and I showed you the stitching. I finished the stitching, grunged it all up. Um, I used a few different coloured stitches and grunged them just to make it a bit different. Uh, I decided to put um, elastic in this one as well. I'll show you a quick flip through. All of the pages are plain, I've just added bits of my witchy ephemera okay and again different sizes different textures different colors i've got some um grungy book pages <coughs> oh dear music paper and then there's the elastic. So as you can see, if I pull this one out, you'll... I can now take that out. I finish that one. I can make a new one and put a new one in there and save this somewhere else. So this is what I've been working on, basically, is a, a few of these because I tend to just stitch straight in. And actually, personally, I prefer this style. Um, just because I like to be able to move things about. So, yeah. That's that one. And as you can see, it does pop open. So, I didn't want to put holes in here. I just got a piece of sari silk and chuck that around the middle. And that's enough. So, that's that one. 
and then I did this enchanted forest one um, which I'm in love with what is it with me and sari silk I can never <laughs> every time you guys every time I go to untangle my books that I've made I make a right mess of opening it so this was using um, an old Britannica book that I was given. Again, this has got the elastic. I put some beads on and then we got sari silk tied in the middle. Isn't it beautiful? Yes. Take my price tag out ready for camp. Then inside, I've done a little flippy flip and it's got some a velcro dot there so you can hide things under there I've got a plain coffee dyed um, index card and a journal card from the kit uh, this kit is from Stamperia and it's called Enchanted Forest and then we've got pages from the book pretty much all coffee dyed stuff um, I've put some coffee dyed uh, dot grid paper in. I've put some of that thin sugary paper stuff in. Just some <coughs> coffee dyed A4 paper in as well. So yeah, this one's only got the three signatures. But it's a nice big chunky book of shadows as you can see so let's tie her back up because this this one really does pop open <laughs> do you see oh goodness me I've got a few more to make. Um, I want to make another little cottage witch one. Um, I want to make a fairy one. I've got a few um, other bits and bobs. Let me look at this. Um, this one. Because I don't think I showed you this dark grimoire I don't think I showed this did I in the last video so I finished this one this week as well um, again chunky monkey and I wanted it to be sort of messy you can see nice and thick inside Again, plain papers inside with ephemera just attached to pages. Uh, this has got graph paper and all sorts in it. But yeah, I wanted something that was a bit dark magic style. So we've got um, <coughs> darker images. throughout this one isn't he cute uh, so some of this is uh, my dark magic ephemera from the Etsy store uh, these I can't remember where I got these from I think they may have been sent to me in happy mail I think uh, this is one of mine Right, this one I've got torn pages and things. One of mine. One of mine. And what I like to do in journals like this is add extra pieces of paper and just clip them in um, in different levels. I, I use some of the um, mica sprays from Tim Holtz to make this shiny. And on here, you'll see this is a purple, it's supposed to be purple, but I would say that's pink to me, not purple. 
but hey ho so yeah the point was i wanted it to be a bit grungy but these are mine all of these you can find on my etsy shop which i will link below uh, they're all sort of in different packs you'll have to have a look through for the ones that you want little dragon <coughs> I think this is from one of the pagan ephemera kits possibly one or two i think dragon <coughs> so yeah i i wanted something different to what i've made the other so that was that one and i haven't sewn this one together because this one doesn't go pop And this was a hidden signature in this one. So hidden binding. There's no binding on the outside of the book. But now you see, like, this is what I normally do. Uh, grimoires and journals like this. But I really like the elastic ones um, because you can manoeuvre things a little bit easier. So that's it for today, guys. Sorry, it's a bit of a boring video. Um, if you've got any suggestions for videos you'd like to see, do let me know below. I will be keeping an eye out for whether you want me to uh, sew those signatures in the Mermaid Journal or leave them as they are and just put them into the elastic. Um, the giveaway is still hot. I think there's about 18 away, 18 subs away from the giveaway happening. So like and share as much as you possibly can. Uh, let people know to get the chance to win every single one of my digital kits on my Etsy shop. I believe there's about 30 odd, maybe more than that now on there. Um, a lot of money's worth I'm giving away to two people as a thank you. Um, if you're on my Patreon, oh, that was the other thing I wanted to say. The Patreon... I wanted to say a big thank you to because you guys have enabled me to purchase some more stamps they're coming next week once i've um received them i will put a thank you post up on the patreon if you don't know what patreon is you pay a monthly subscription and you get digital content from me um each month so that may be pages of ephemera like the ones in this journal um that might be journal pages that I have printed um, to use in my books of shadows I for example this is from the lavender witch digital kit move this out of the way. so this is from the lavender witch digital kit this one isn't on the patreon but I will quite often post two or three individual pages that you can print out um, and using your journals or books of shadows as well as ephemera. I also um, include actual book of shadows pages um, such as kitchen witchcraft, shadow work and all that sort of thing and workshops for a minimum of £2 a month up to I think it's £11.50 a month and you get a lot for your money <clears throat> and by going through that subscription service, that enables me to buy more materials to be able to make things to show you guys. And it helps me out. Um, you know, I'm a disabled mum. I'm constantly battling with my fibromyalgia. And this is sort of my happy place doing the crafting. So it is really, really appreciated. I will... Do all the links below, as I said, for Etsy, for Patreon, for Facebook, and I will also link the giveaway video below, the same as I have in the last couple of videos. Um, so if you're interested in entering, all you need to do is like and subscribe uh, the video and to the channel. And yeah, as soon as we reach 1,000 subscribers, I will be announcing the two winners. Um, very, very exciting. I am so, so pleased. But yeah, I'd love to hear from you all. So please comment below. Let me know how you all are. Let me know um, what you think I should do next. And I will speak to you all soon. Blessings.